Hi traders, Lucas here and today I will give you 5 tips to choose in the best way possible the features you will use in your machine learning models. If you are already there, it's 100% sure you already have seen some mediums article with very bad features in engineering. Ok, you take a linear regression, a neural network and you will just create some MACD, RSI, SMA and you will just pray to have something correct and that's exactly the wrong way to do. So of course I can't give you in 5 minutes the detail about all the things you need to do. If you want to go deeper, just take a look about my ML for trading course in the description and let's begin directly with the first tip. The first one is you need to have features aligned with your targets. It's basic but it's very important and that's the error I see most often. Let's imagine you want to predict the volatility of the next month for example. Do you really think that for example a moving average over the last 5 minutes is very interesting? If you want to predict the next month volatility, do you think that the information about the small variation in the last 5 minutes are very important? Of course not. And it's very basic in this example, but you need to adopt the same attitude for each feature you want to use for your target. If you want to predict the next month volatility, maybe the previous month volatility can be very interesting. The volume traded the previous month can be interesting, even the price variation can be very interesting. But over a medium term, one month, two months, three months, to find big moves into the price. The second tip is you need to have features aligned with your horizon. It means in our previous example, the predictive horizon is one month. I want to estimate the next month volatility. So all your features need to be adapted to that. Because again, if you want to predict the next month volatility, you can't do it using, for example, the last five minute variation. That doesn't make any sense. On the other hand, if you want to predict the next 5 minutes variation, maybe the volatility over the 200 previous bar is not so much important. Maybe the volatility over the 10, the 20 previous bar will give you much more information for the target you are trying to estimate. The third tip which can be the most important and the one you don't hear about that and that's quite interesting. You have several models that you can use to estimate a target. You can have the tabular model. It means what? It means each observation is a line. You have one observation, one line and several columns. When you will have several observations, you will have a two-dimensional array. So that's the tabular features. On the other end, you have the three-dimensional features. It means for each observation, you don't have one line and several columns, but you have several lines and several columns. So if you want several observations, you will have a three-dimensional array. Like that, it seems nothing. But it's very important to understand that the features you will put as input will change according to the model you will use. If you use tabular data, you can summarize a lot of features the volatility over the 200 last period, 50 last period, the moving average of an indicator over the n last period, that's great because it will give you summarized information. But for the sequence, the three-dimensional array, it can be a very hard to solve problem because let's imagine you want to use the last 200 balls volatility. If you have a sequence of 10 observations, so the 10 last observation, if you take the last 200 balls volatility, you will have nearly the same values for all the observation in this sequence and it can impact your model. So maybe you can adapt that to your model and instead of using a rolling volatility, you can use the intra-bar volatility for example. The fourth tip is to avoid information overlap. Let me explain. We heard a lot about the features data leakage, okay? When you will take future information to create your features. That's an error, of course. But doing the same thing in the opposite way can be also a huge error. Because when you will do your backtest, it will be very difficult to do not do any mistake and create some non-realistic PNL. So what I'm trying to do always is to be in the present. From this date, so time t, I will take all my features before 
and all my target after. And I will not try to mix anything because it will be very difficult to avoid to have any data leakage or target leakage, which is on the other side. And the last tip, the fifth tip is to avoid features that is regime dependent. What it means? It means, for example, let's imagine you created a target which will give you zero when the inflation is very low and one when the inflation is very high. It means that you will not have, for example, okay, today is zero, tomorrow one, and then zero, zero, one, one, no. You will have something like, okay, from 2017 to 2022, you will have a very high inflation. It's just an example. I know that it's not the reality, but it's just an example. And then from 2022 to today, you will have zero because the inflation is very low. You will not be able to use correctly this information, especially if you want to use, for example, short-term prediction. If you really want to integrate this information, you can create two models maybe, even if I don't recommend you to do so, but that's the only option I see you can use a features like that. So I hope you like this video. If you have any question, feel free to drop it into the comments area and see you soon in the next video.